We all take for granted the impact that imagined creations have. They define us, inspire us, comfort us, and nurture us. We turn to them in our darkest hours. They are the thing that keeps us going when we feel as if there's nothing left in the tank. We easily turn on them. We easily rip them apart, forgetting that even if we do not enjoy a particular creation, that does not mean that creation is not vital to someone else's happiness. We forget that it's the fear we will lose out or miss out on something that convinces us that a creation is shit. Even though you could survey the planet and find at least a cult or two of buggers who will swear up and down that that thing is the best creation since the fleshlight. However, unlike everyone else, I'm not here to make you feel guilty. Like, yeah, we're all responsible at this point for being so passive about the destruction and simple, well, the stupidity of wasting lives on nothing more than hatred of art made to improve the lives of those who appreciate that type of art. It's a tale as old as time, though. The more you can convince a group to hate something, the more you can control that group through the misery of forcing one to waste their time purely on the false idea that hating something can be fun. Of course, we bear a bit of the blame. We see the depiction of what humanity should aspire to be in art, but we're too busy hating on shit to realize we're letting the future of our society go the way of the Titanic. And all because we're so full of hate. We forget that together we have done so many incredible things as a society and species. How now, brown cow? It could not all be our total bad. Let's face it, the leadership of our society, and a leadership that, like it or not, bears a great responsibility towards shaping life for our species as a whole, are not only utterly failing us, they're doing so in such a blunt, dumbass, satirical fashion. But there's no way this reality we assume is the real world is actually the whole truth. They pit us against each other, both in politics and the news. There is no diplomacy. They act like high schoolers in a cafeteria fighting over rumors and ego-driven victories. Politics have turned into reality TV and the media has turned into nothing more than a blame machine on both ends. We all fear anxiety so much that none of us even question that at times it can feel like you're fighting an invisible force. One that knows just how to fuck with you and all your weaknesses too. It's like living with a bully in your head. But what does it mean when you can start, and you know, just for shits and giggles, but when you start to fight that force back with mantras and spellcasting games that turn out to affect the world in bizarre fashions? Well, you're high, so you just sort of keep at it, you know, and the more you do it, the more you take back your will and control. It takes effort, like training to be a Jedi. But slowly over time, you cut back the weed, and lo and behold, you still have the same control. After having one last panic attack from realizing, holy fuck, why does this work? Why have I manifested shit? Why do people ignore the clear experiences we've all had to prove something else is going on in our world, and it's more fantastical and Maybe even a little more scary and frightening than we'd all like to believe. But just remember, kids, the scarier something is, that just means that on the other end of that frightful shit, there's something incredible and fucking amazing and just out of this world crazy and awesome. All it takes is a bit of web sleuthing to realize 
compare our government records to back up and verify the oddest and strangest phenomena. And when you factor in the bizarre cases of predictive programming or psychic predictions found in entertainment, you can then truly realize nothing is true and everything is permitted.